Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tadaima, a Terrace House podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I'm Robert Scarponito, joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Colin Banwa. Jack Zepeda. How'd you be much today? And Colin Sparling. Are you ready for the Q's and the A's? I can only be ready, ready for one. Bonesaw is ready. <laughs> Thanks, Spider-Man. Yeah, uh, we're doing a little bit of a special one today. Uh, I mean, earlier this week, we published our episode six spoiler cast. So if you're in for that, check that out. Uh, but recently, as a show, we've hit a pretty cool milestone. I think we're all pretty excited about it. But we recently hit 500 subscribers on YouTube. You know, Yay. we'll pat ourselves Woo. on the back for that. We're almost at 550 at uh, the time of this recording. Yeah, Whoa. and I mean, you know, we couldn't have done it without you guys. We really appreciate it. And uh, what we decided to do is kind of part part the veil a little bit and uh, let let you guys throw some questions at us. So in the past week or two, we've been kind of fielding a bunch of questions from the fans, from the Todaima fans out there. Uh, and we're just going to kind of answer them here, you know, and have a little fun, have a little chat, you know, a, f- a fireside chat. It has been a, a long reveal. journey. A butt. I mean, it's a yeah. butt reveal. This By the way, let reveal. us know in the comments how our butts look. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. How do our yeah. butts sound? No. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Colin, how does your no. butt sound? All right. Um, so. Healthy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, first healthy, question. Period. First question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess we're, we're treating this a little bit like a panel, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I'll be moderating with all the questions. So, first off, we have a question from Wes2225 from our Discord server, which if you want to join, link below. Is this the, uh, we- the very Wes from Aloha State? If it is, DM us. Wow. <laughs> DM us on Instagram. Insta. 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 Oh, uh, daily, daily. I, I don't even know. You, you yeah, need to. Poor daily. Uh, but Wes twenty two twenty five asks, best food porn from any Terrace House series. Keep up the great work. Thank you for that. I, I uh, have an I A know. to this Q. Ooh. Okay, Colin. Yeah, go ahead. What do you got? Hold on, real quick. Hold on, real quick. We should flag this first. I just thought about this. Like a lot of these questions flag have to it. do with Terrace House overall. So definitely spoilers here for pretty much every season. Ah. That's yes. ever been out on Netflix in North America. So we might talk about Aloha State, which we haven't covered yet, but we've watched. Some of us have watched. So fair warning there. Spoilers for everything, right? If you don't want to know what they ate in previous seasons, <laughs> yeah, turn food. away. Get out of here. Now. Spoilerific. You know, it's, it's funny experience. because we, we say that, but like food is at least 40% of the show. That's a yeah, lot. It is, yeah, but it's, it's like a plot point. Only once. I can I mean, only think of one sure. time it's a real plot point. But d- how many times has the camera been fixated on a plate of food in this TV show? Many, many Hundreds. times. At least twice an episode, I'd yeah. say. <laughs> That's yeah, what I'm, I'm sh- saying, man. There's a, there's a lot of food porn shots happening. I mean, yeah, there's so com- Twitter accounts dedicated to Terrace House Food. Shout out. Yeah, it's so, good shit. Yeah. Uh, hey, Colin, though, you had an answer. What do you got? Oh, yeah. I'm going to, I don't know who else is going to say it, but I'm going to beat you to the punch. Kujitsu oh, Kacho, wow. a.k.a. Masao, and his famous or infamous curry. Mm. Mm. Be- because the way people, the curry itself look good, but I mean, curry can only look so good from a food porn perspective because it's curry. Yeah. But the way people talked about it, I might it might have been the most stoked I've ever seen people on the show about food. They were raving. Food, he put like, especially he put food cooked by it. it. Yeah, like clam, clam stock. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it was good stuff. It, it looked really delicious, and I love too that that's one that came from a Terrace House member, right? Instead of like at a restaurant or something, because there's definitely mm-hmm. just as many food shots from outside the house as there are inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and everyone on opening new doors is like, "Oh my god, my salad! This is the greatest thing I've ever tasted!" Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're like, okay, he can play bass real good. He can cook real good. Why is this dude like? Why? How does he not have a girlfriend? <laughs> After Risako broke his heart on yeah. the back on the back porch there at O and D in Kurizawa, um, she was saying, "Seriously, you have to put that recipe in a in a cookbook." So that's how good it was. He's like, I only wanted to make it for you, mm. for you. So I've got one of my favorite food shots. It's kind of a cheat, but the beer tower on Taka's birthday mm. that always sticks <laughs> the out to me. Tower. I want a beer tower on my birthday. That sounds like fun. So, um, so that's two. That's two goes for uh, O N D so far. 
you know, my vote's also O and D, so I might as well jump on that bandwagon. <laughs> Damn it. Right? Oh man. I one of my favorite ones, and maybe this is this is also cheating because it's not quite food porn. It doesn't maybe fulfill the porn part of it, but that shot of Udai's uh, soup stock <laughs> that wow. uh, it was just water <laughs> because that's the one time I can think of in any Terrace House episode where it was a shot of food, and I was like, that doesn't look that good. <laughs> <laughs> you were disappointed. Yeah. Disappointed. But it, but it was also like, we didn't know yet. We we had no idea at that point, like watching for the first time, that it would be so shitty. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe the smelling the onion thing at the grocery store was a dead giveaway. Mm, yeah. <gasps> man, like, I, I, I was a believer. I was, I was like, like oh man, know he doing? knows. I, I was like, is this a thing? Question. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a cooking boy, so yeah, but I don't like, even. Even looking at that soup, though, it looked so bland. Like, you just kind of know something's not right with that soup. The l- color was light. Very. I think I've had mm. good light soups, so there was something about this one that just, just by looking at it, you're like, this boy can't cook. Daily, did you say one yet? I did not. Um, so I'm, I'm going to depart from the pack here and say here in our newest season in Tokyo... 2019 I might be biased just because it's the last thing I saw and I was Recency really really bias. hungry when I saw it yeah the the steak from the steakhouse they had mashed potatoes oh, and corn yes. Yes. and mashed it was taters. sizzling it was sizzling so I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie to y'all I, I don't remember this steak very clearly I must oh. have not been paying attention right when they showed the food oh you lost I remember the conversation that happened over the food Right, because that's when uh, Ruka's getting questioned about Risako. But I don't remember the food itself. Go back, it's worth it. And yeah. I was going to say, Go like, back. yeah, I agree with that. And also, I mean, it is recent, but in the latest season of Terrace House, we are not bereft of fantastic food porn shots. I mean, I even like that. Uh, st- I can't remember what it's called, but it was the thing in the souffle cup with the cheese melted on top. That looked good. Oh, uh, like a, that the natto was, that, that curry. Natto thing, looked that, good. Yeah. Also, natto. the um, the curry, the spicy it's curry like that Shohei just made. Mm. That looked good, too. I'm like, yes, yes. It's, it's too happening. spicy for Ruka, though. Yeah. <sighs> Water. And he's Ludo Fan, too. And Judo Fan. Ludo Fan. Yeah, oh, he's, he's a good fun. cook. I, if you had to they pick mean, here... Here, here's one kind of impromptu question. If you had to pick one person from any season of Terrace House to cook you dinner tonight, who would you select? Masao. No question. Masao. Masao? Hayato. Masao. Yeah, I was going to say Hayato. Hayato's oh, mine. Oh, wow. Well, so professional. Yeah. yeah. That's, that makes uh, a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to hang out with him, though. Well, I would ask Same. him why. I would ask him why. I want to talk to that man. I want to get to know him. Why I would rather hang out. With, I would rather hang out with Masao. But if like if it's tonight, like hey, you can have anyone cook dinner. I'm going with Hayato. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's move on to our next question here from Conch Bubby from our Discord. Shout out! You've been with us for a while. Appreciate yo, all the support, man. Yo, homie. hey dude. For sure. Conch Bubby. Uh, question from Qu- Conch Bubby. My first question is: Why aren't these podcasts longer? I can mm. take that. It's mm. time. It, it's a lot of work to make these podcasts. You know, it's like we're we're trying to sync up all four of our schedules. We're all, we're four of us are on very different schedules, different time uh, so, zones, and time and zones. Yeah, yep, so it's it's a zones. lot to kind of coordinate everything and be like, you know, hey, can, when can we meet? Can we meet this time? Cool. Like we only have this much time to record though, and also talk about all this other stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to chime in here too as well too, and kind of answer his question or her question. I think it's a he. Um, with another question, which is realistically, how long would you want these episodes to be? Because we have had, you know, conversations about, oh, how long should the show be and what works with everybody's schedules more importantly. And I'm just curious, you know, if people, because there have been other people that ask for more content. So I'm curious, like, you know, in a perfect world, how long are these episodes? We kind of feel a little weird spending more time talking about an episode than it would take to watch the episode right so that's mm-hmm. always been something like ah should they be that long we don't know you know but right. we're always evolving and we want feedback so let us know yeah and i think it's a it's a quality over quantity thing too right yeah. mm-hmm. I, I think especially when it comes to episode spoiler casts i think there's only so much good content you can pull out of just one episode um before it it gets boring or we're just getting too deep into the minutiae 
and this and the the we're just kind of spinning our tires conversationally mm-hmm. so i think uh one of the things we've we've tried to do better as a show is really keep it moving and really focus on the stuff that we think the listeners because we think it's interesting ourselves the interesting content that comes out of an episode so right. we want to concentrate on the stuff we think the listeners want to hear yeah, and I like about. to th- I like to think that we cover you know dedicating uh, one week one podcast to every episode. We like to think we cover most of the bases. I mean, of course, sometimes there'll be one or two things that come up in a show. And we're like, oh man, we didn't get to bring that up. Oh well, you know, move on to the next one. But I like to think we're pretty comprehensively covering it. So you know, not sure what a longer podcast would sound like. But again, we want to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. And so, uh, I mean, also we're, the whole idea of doing an even longer show. It would, it would have to be it, there's no way it would be a spoiler cast for our, our longer episodes anyway so um and also our watch time doesn't necessarily always reflect that we should do longer podcasts based on our analytics yeah. mm-hmm. and and all this isn't to say that we're not intensely flattered that you want to listen to of our course. voices for longer yeah why I, why the hell I, Right. Why? I, this, I'm sorry, but this isn't the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> I think what it comes down to is we would rather be able to produce multiple episodes across multiple weeks that maybe like one episode covers episode 10 of, you know, Tokyo 2020. But then another episode is like one of our, our fun ones, like the ones where we cover Noah and Sena or uh, Shion and Subasa, right? So instead of like having one really long episode, we have multiple uh, maybe shorter episodes, but they cover interesting, you know, between the lines kind of stuff that we like to do instead of just straight up. We watched episode 10. Let's talk about episode 10. Yeah, and this is yeah, this is sort of related to this as well, too, tangentially, tangentially. But uh, Sir John left a what up, by the way, shout out. He's in our discord, too. But he did leave a um, YouTube comment a while back saying, hey, you know, maybe you consider doing a second podcast, an off topic podcast. So curious if anyone else agrees with that i mean we want to hear about it and no promises or anything like that but we just generally want to know you know what you guys want because we want to do the best show that we possibly can um for for everyone that's listening and for exactly what do you want from us tell us (laughs) yeah if you want to hear us talk about different uh uh, cheeses Mm -hmm. on an off-topic podcast yeah cheeses (laughs) Cheese is good, yeah. okay? Fuck Fair. you. <laughs> Who doesn't um, like cheese? <laughs> uh, but let's let's move on to our next question. We have quite a lot to get through, actually. <laughs> on that this, note. <laughs> this one comes from Pika Bleck. Pika Bletch? Pika Bleck. Pika. Bleck. On our, on our Discord. Yeah, I was going to say, you mean, is there about to be a breakdown right now? Like, are they Shout out to all you metalheads out there. But yeah, from our Discord, Pika asks, did you guys have experience with Japanese culture or media beforehand? Do you think that influenced your initial reactions to Terrace House at all? For example, I tried getting a coworker who has never been to Japan or watched anime or played video games from Japan to try watching, and they were shocked at how slow things were in general. Uh, Daily, do you have maybe a off the top of your head? so, So I'm a longtime weeb. (laughs) <laughs> I, I started as that kid in class that was like so obsessed with Naruto. I wouldn't stop talking about Naruto. How old and then you? as I got, uh, gosh, this was probably from like fifth grade to seventh grade. Did you oh, develop your own Kekka Genkai? Can I follow up with two more questions, please? <laughs> one, um, no. <laughs> one, how did you run? Just you in know general. how I ran with my arms back behind me because it's oh more gosh. aerodynamic and it's how hey. they run in the show. It's coming back around because it's cool now. It's it cool is. to it run is. like Naruto cool now. now. It's so a meme. Guys, Next question. Fuck you guys. Were you not were you, cool? Were you the kid in the back who would keep doing Naruto jutsu signs while while the teacher was lecturing? Okay, I wasn't even good enough to master all like the hand signs. My friend Tristan, though, shout out, um, he had them down. That's how we became friends because one day I saw him doing it and I was like, fellow weeb. Oh, man. <laughs> we are friends now. <laughs> mm. Anyway, mm-hmm. so once, once I got out of that phase, after I exhausted. <laughs> all my love for the very like actiony shonen anime i started watching more like slice of life like fun anime like nichi joe and more recently like um miss kobayashi's dragon maid is my favorite anime mm. actually That's a good um, show. i just really 
liked it for you know like the the everyday and i've been learning japanese for a while now too so those kinds of anime really help with like because i don't need to know how to say i will defeat you sasuke my lifelong <laughs> friend and enemy but i need to know how to say oh we need to go grocery shopping we're out of eggs like that kind of thing you know so mm-hmm. um i i feel pretty experienced in in this lifelong obsession with all things japan as far as culture goes yeah i'm in a similar boat i started a lot with uh shonen like dragon ball will always have my heart and i recognize how Ah. fucking stupid of a show dragon ball is yeah kind of in the same boat as robert yeah and then i moved on to slice of life like daily you know things like k-on right uh things like Mm. that and and then just just weird anime in general and also like i played a lot of japanese rpgs in my life and just japanese made games you know so there's there's this humor that japan tends to have that for americans can get real weird or sketchy but when you've just consumed that much japanese animation and video games you're kind of like oh i get it right um yeah but another thing too you notice with japanese media is yeah you're right everything is a lot slower it's a lot slower paced like sometimes it's a joke you know the whole like it takes five episodes for goku to fire the kamehameha right like it's a very (laughs) slow paced thing but at the same time a show about four high school girls getting together and forming a band and drinking tea and eating dessert is one of the most compelling things i've seen and it's it's so boring like on the face of it you know what i mean it's it's just this weird thing that japanese culture can kind of nail is that minutia of everyday life i guess Hmm. colin uh i'm kind of in the same boat as as robert i started out with a lot of anime dragon ball being the first one i've seen for i think it's the same story for a lot of people it's one of their first experiences with anime uh, and of course, video games played a part in it too. So video games and anime, it's a very typical way to have your first exposure to Japanese media. But um, it eventually turned into a thing where uh, I ended up taking Japanese when I was an undergrad, took three semesters of it. Don't remember much of it at all, suffice to say. Um, but that also awoke a an interest in Japanese culture and tourism and stuff like that. So I actually watch a ton of tourism videos um and vlogs and stuff from japan uh so i came became a japanophile along the way and i'd really like to uh visit there and maybe eventually move move there too for a while um and then discover terrace house and now i do this podcast with these lovely people so yeah and also um you know our first episode that we ever recorded like episode one of tadaima we go into the history a little bit we're going a little bit more in depth now because this is for everyone that's joined us you know recently but there is a little bit more background information on that episode if you want to go back and listen to it yeah Yeah. um no but it started with me look i'm old guys so i started with the nintendo like old school nintendo like the nes right in the 80s and just like loving mario and packing up in a box and taking anywhere where i knew there would be a tv like a babysitter's house or whatever like it was my first portable system (laughs) so to speak and so uh started with that went to super nintendo just found out that nintendo you know at a young age was a japanese company just got interested in learning more about that also film you know i I mean there's an old movie from the 80s with uh uh keaton what's his name Batman, the guy who played Batman, Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. Michael Keaton. Thank you. I could not remember his first name. Anyways, uh, it's called Gung Ho, and oh my gosh, watch that movie from the eighties. It is hilarious. Oh, sh- I love you that movie me so the much. Preview for that. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, but it just, yeah. But it just kind of like also made my interest spread out more because I grew up in the Midwest, and not a lot of people look like me, and I'm like a Pacific Islander, and people racist people in the midwest would just call me chinese they're just like are you chinese or japanese i'm like uh neither i don't know but anyways yeah. and it but it got me like well maybe Ohio. i should investigate this because people think this is what i am so i would just get into like you know asian movies and just asian culture and stuff and just kind of spread out and then i would watch real world growing up and mm-hmm. now terrace house and it just kind of was a natural progression so of course anime you know old school 80s anime um uh, on the on the sci-fi channel Saturday morning Saturday anime was something when like Saturday morning cartoons was a thing rest in peace Saturday morning cartoons um right. yeah and it's always been that way you wouldn't you wouldn't think I'd be big in a Japanese culture because um weird fact here my grandpa was actually in Pearl Harbor <laughs> he's a veteran Ooh. Um, and Ooh. so he grew up hating Japan, of course. And so it's just uh, interesting uh it's interesting way how history can can change the world essentially so yeah. that's it for sure. Um, And one thing I I do want to say while we're on this topic is that 
at least for me, I try not to come at this from an aspect of like, oh, Japan's cool because it's Japan, right? Because that just, you know, that yeah. distills everything and then just this like anything Japanese is cool just because of what it is. And, you know, I come from, I mean, like, so I grew up in Korea, right? And whenever I'd say that to people, everyone's like, oh, you must know everything about Korea. Tell me everything about Korea, please, because now you're the Korea guy. And it's like, <laughs> right. <laughs> No, that kind of really sucks to be in that place. So in the same way, I try not to approach really any other culture just because I like a TV show from that country where it's like, oh, obviously all British people see words that pop up around objects like Sherlock Holmes does on the BBC show, right? Oh, like, yes. no, that's, that, <laughs> yeah. that's just not how it works. And it's in the same way here in Terrace House where like the people in the house definitely act weird. Like, let's not let's not be mistaken here. They know they have cameras on them. They know they do weird shit. But I'm not going to assume like every 29 year old Japanese chef is going to try and hit on an 18 year old idol, you know? No, no, but I, I definitely think it, it like, it's better that we do have terrace house to kind of give us that inside perspective of what it's like for the most part to live day to day in Japan. Right. Mm. Obviously mm. with a few caveats, but it, it's giving us that insight. Cause like, uh, one of my favorite Japanese YouTubers, uh, that Japanese man, Utah, he's like basically a Japanese YouTuber for English speaking audiences. He's like, basically tells you like up front this is what J japan is like this is why this happens this is why that happens blah 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 um and so he did an, he did a video about weeaboos and it's just titled let's oh, talk gosh. about weeaboos and basically what he goes on about it and i think this is a really good point is that we do, you got to be careful to, to not straddle that line of like fetishizing a culture of people yep you know what i'm saying yep. like just because you're a person from japan doesn't mean like not everything to robert's point like you can't just define them by just oh you're that japanese guy that's see because that's i mean they're a per they're people <laughs> like you can't just yeah. you got to treat a person like a person <laughs> right your country you just, does not define your personality there's, exactly there's, mm -hmm. there's infinite personalities within the country and culture of japan just like right. any other and, country on earth and i i get that that japan has a unique uh pop culture to it has a lot of interesting things come out of it. It's a beautiful country, you know, um, but at the same time, I mean, people are still people. They're still, you know, have lives to live. They're, they're just like everyone else in the world. They're trying to live their lives. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just that's my People's rant. People's people. people. People is people. As people fun as it is to is talk people. about, you know, Terrace House and Japanese people, you know, you just you just got to be careful and be mindful of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I'm definitely uh, guilty of it. Right. Uh, so this is these mm -hmm. guilty samurai. That's Colin. Thank you. No, Thank uh, you. but the next two questions are kind of these are ones we get from kind of everywhere. We've gotten them since we started the show, so we just kind of want to get them out of the way now. Um, first one being, will we ever cover Boys and Girls Next Door, the very very first season of Terrace House, where it all began? Uh, Jack, do you maybe want to take this one? Oh God, me. Um, I will say, you know, when we first put our foreheads together and like hey guys um let's do a podcast about this show yeah that you know, was an awkward meeting i didn't know y'all and you were just like get in here put your forehead put against your mine forehead. i was like what we need to create huddle the up. ultimate foreheads huddle up the um, we, and that day we discovered Vol we were a voltron mm -hmm. and we've ah. been connected at the hip ever since so when we when we set out to do the show we wanted to become you know as you know, we want to produce the best show possible that we could for with the four of us covering Terrace House for an English speaking audience, basically worldwide. Right. Because it is a Japanese show. It is subtitled. And we just thought that we could we could do it. You know, we want to see how far it could go. So for that reason, we're really focusing on the shows that are readily available to um, English speaking audiences. And those are the episodes that are on Netflix. And so, yes, Boys and Girls Next Door is on our radar. However, it is, you know, kind of low on the list of priorities um, because it's not on Netflix right now. Hopefully that day will change. That will change one day. I don't know how likely that is to happen, but damn it. We want that to happen because we want to, again, have a show that that is there for the largest Terrace House audience that we can that we can serve. So. <laughs> That's basically it. And, you know, that being said, we are going to cover, we will definitely plan on covering Aloha State. We haven't got there yet. It's just a matter of time, you know, but right now, everyone, the Terrace House uh, 
intelligentsia, so to speak, is focusing on Tokyo 20. And so that's why we're here covering it this way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just about like what's hot right now. Like if we started releasing boys and girls. next, Exactly. We started releasing boys and girls next door episodes next week. Like, sure, there'd be an audience for it and we'd definitely be happy to have them. But we'd also be really missing out on the second half of the first part of Tokyo 20. Right. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, that's kind of our focus. Yeah. Never say never, though. Yeah. So don't think we're never going to do it. We'll just, right. We'll right. And it's uh, of Justin Bieber. Yeah. Right. And never and it's that. definitely going to like if, if we were to cover that series, it would definitely cut our audience down. Right. Like there's just it, not as much of a listenership since it's the Boys and Girls Next Door just isn't as accessible. It's just extra hoops you got to jump through. Right. Right. You know, yeah. but Oops. man, the Terrace House audience. So there's one thing I've learned in the last, what, 10 months. Holy shit. How long we've we been doing this um, is that the Terrace House fandom is rabid you guys are awesome you guys are hardcore mm. we are humbled that you would even spend time with us every week listening to the show so i mean to go through and translate in english all of those episodes like holy shit like name another fandom that would go to those lengths i mean that is really impressive yeah and so I mean, so you really want to shout out like how awesome that community is that they would do that yeah i mean we we shout them out pretty constantly but hey costco subs you guys do awesome work like you're yeah. kind of the backbone of the terrace house community which is pretty awesome to see mm. for sure mm. for sure 100 um, uh, 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 but this does also lead us to the other question that we get a lot is why don't we use a vpn we get a lot of comments that say like oh you know you can use a vpn to access uh japanese netflix to one get to bgnd and two get the episodes of tokyo 20 as they come out weekly there and, you know, it's just about, like, we're trying to access the biggest audience again, right? Like, we're, we're all stuck in America, unfortunately. Different parts of America, right? Um, but, unfortunately. You know, it, unfortunately, right? <laughs> unfortunately, we're in America right now. It's not the best country to live in right now. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's just a matter of, like, cool, part one just came out. We're going to we're gonna cover that for now. We're going to dig yeah. through it and go through and go in deep, you know? Yeah. It's just about, again, you know, trying to... Um, help the show grow as quickly as possible because we are late to the game you know there are you know, speak the name oh, yeah. but there are plenty of terrace house podcasts out there you know so again we're just humbled again that you guys would choose to to spend yeah. time with us every week thank you for choosing Tadaima. <laughs> thank you for choosing <laughs> like we're a healthcare provider a cell service <laughs> yeah. thank you for choosing Tadaima. side effects man. <sighs> uh, yeah, yeah now uh, now boarding our delta platinum members <laughs> now um, but our discord back. members join our discord <laughs> yes get in there man there's like there's this, like i said small group cool people man there's very much so on. yeah it's a little discordant uh, hey. so let's get back to those those discord questions after that bad joke uh we have one here from adam shout out just adam. adam yeah just, just adam. adam are you discord. the yeah, one and the only adam he's the only adam he was the very first well um question for the pod any terrace house alumni you're hoping to see pop up in tokyo 2019 20 hashtag bring back armand now and adam right a question for you question for you adam is are you british question for the pod the question for the pod that that is a very british way of talking about a podcast is it, is it? yeah weird. weird that you know that i because i oh. so uh, uh-huh. I listen to the Abroad in Japan podcast, and every time they end it, like, listen to the Abroad in Japan podcast on this, and anyway, you get your pods. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't like know. I don't know if I can be on board with this one. Let, let's, let's just answer his question, please. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, who would you want to see come back and a, a Terrace House alumni show up in Tokyo 2019 2020 daily? Okay. Okay. So. I know, and he he said what would be my honest to goodness first choice, like Armon. I want something to happen. Well, he did in the end get his story, but I, I guess I want more action for Armon. I want. Mm-hmm. I want he comes, comes back more. to Aloha State too, by the way. Spoiler alert. <gasps> Nani. He does. He does. Don't yeah. tell it's a cameo. Spoilers. Why are it's you a cameo. Okay. on spoiling her for Aloha State, Colin? You yeah, every dude. week now you're throwing new shit out there. Stop. Colin, I, I, do, no, do we already talk fine. about it? We already talked about this. Okay, keep going. Anyway, but what I think would be really interesting and be a ridiculous amount of drama 
is not only what if Sana came back because she always comes back, mm -hmm. but what if Noah comes back at the same time? They're yeah, broken totally. up. They're both uh, searching for love and they have to deal with their ex in the house. You're That'd talking about coming back and like living there or just a cameo? Yeah. Appearance? Oh, mm. what? Ooh. I was just thinking cameo appearance, but also they're not broken up, are they? No, no I don't still. think so. Yeah. I don't think I so. Think, That's the I thing. I could totally see them coming back as a couple for like an episode, maybe two at most, like just quick appearance. Because yeah. let's face it, Sana, she can't quit Terrace House. She's mm -mm. she's the staple. Miss in Terrace it. House. The, the needle's yeah. in too deep. Yeah, she's got to be in it this season somewhere Is that a somehow. Saying? I get it is now. That's a hey. terrifying saying. I don't like that. Someone <laughs> mentioned, I think there's a YouTube comment out there that like they'd like to see Guy come back for the Olympics. Oh, yeah. For surfing. Guy Sato. And then also um, Kaito for skateboarding. He, that's his goal, isn't it? Oh. To be in the Olympics, too. So we have two board sports athletes yeah. that could totally do it. So hope yeah. to see that. That would be awesome. You know, I'd, I'd love to see some uh, boys and girls in the city alumni because, you know, now they're they're kind of they've been around for a while. And we did recently cover BGITC. But when you think about it chronologically, it's been f three, four years since they were on Terrace House. Right. Like it'd just be kind of cool to catch up with like Uchi or Mizuki or even Tap, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we have anyway. to. Do yeah. we have to? <laughs> I, mean, have to see, I would like to see them reach way back in the well, you know, mm. like some like someone that maybe didn't have a lot of time. Like, wasn't it Shunsuke from O&D? He wasn't yeah. there oh, very yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'd be cool to see, you know, an update from him and have him. And he's fun to be around, too. So, yeah, and Honestly, I, I hope I'm, if he does show up again, he's a lot more open with who he is. Mm. Yeah, mm. I think I think there I would be happy just to see pretty much anyone show back up on you know on the show I, it, it just makes me happy anytime an old uh, what would you, an alumni shows back up on the show mm. uh i i mean hansan is always a given i think if hansan just showed up at the house that'd be pretty great yeah uh next question we've got here another one from conch bubby from our discord uh what were your guys first reactions and thoughts when you watched your first episode of terrace house uh colin you want to take this yeah. Um, okay. I, I I remember feeling so the the first time I watched Terrace House was of course uh, Boys and Girls in the City. It's probably about what two three years ago now when I watched it for the first time, and uh, I remember hearing about it actually from a professor uh, of mine, and I think I talked about it with Robert, and then so I just proceeded to watch it, and I remember feeling that it was like slow. Because it was that first episode of BGITC where everyone's walking to the house and they're like, uh, uh, orewa. And then, you know, Hajime Mashite. And they're like all really quiet. And they're like, you know, taken in the house. And I was like, wow, this is very quaint. There's no crazy smash cuts. Like, there's no loud interviews happening. There's no loud music. It's very ASMR. Uh, and that's the thing. I was like, okay, I don't know where this is going. Don't know how this is going to go. And it took about two or three more episodes for me to be like, okay. I'm in. I can't stop watching. Yeah, so I don't know. I I, I liked it, and I, I don't know. I just thought it was slow to begin with. I guess is is to summarize. Mm. Uh, Jack, BGND is where I started, and controversial <laughs> take here. Wait, wait, wait. Robert, wait. what? BGND. BG. Boys and girls in the city, BGITC, <laughs> and um, is where I started. And bitch. Robert, yes, bitch, and bitch. Robert was the one that recommended that I check it out. And uh, because it was reality, reality TV, I definitely went in wanting to hate it. I wanted to shoot it down right away and say this is a dumb show. No, I'm not going to watch this. And then I started watching it. And it was just surprising again. You know how quiet it was, how polite everyone is. You know all the things that everyone says when they first discover Terrace House. And I found myself caring about where, what was going to happen to these people. And I really needed to know. And all the episodes were out right then and there. Like the whole season was, I think a couple seasons. I think Aloha State was um, completed too by the time I started watching the show. And so I was able to binge it like completely. And I, there were just days where I'd watch like 12, 15, 16, 20 episodes in one day. <laughs> I'm just like, I got to know what happens. 
and uh yeah it was uh it was i got in deep and then i did the same thing for loja state binge that and i was like all right i'm in the show's awesome i love it because i get to live my fantasy of living in japan and you know knowing what that's like without actually going so mm-hmm. it was really cool yeah so what about you Dylan? man i, I physically cringed <laughs> On my first watch, I was like, it's like secondhand embarrassment, you know, because it's Mm. like everyone sitting dead silent, like waiting for someone else to come into the house and be like, oh, hi. This is (laughs) And then like not knowing whether or not they stand from the table to be like, hey, hi. And then they're like, I don't know. I also put my like stuff over there it's like it just i felt it like way too hard and then but yeah like colin said it took i needed to kind of get over that first shock of Mm -hmm. embarrassment like secondhand embarrassment in order to enjoy myself more like once people started getting comfortable with each other which then was a very satisfying experience because it was like oh like this is people are like actually getting to know each other it was very different from any of my experience prior with reality tv which was like my mom watching the bachelor and the bachelorette so it felt very genuine which Mm. is a dual edged sword because it's like very wholesome but also it's like i felt like a voyeur i was like i shouldn't watch this this is like people's lives Yeah. yeah it feels so much more human than any other reality tv shows i think what it what hooked me at first it was just everyone that just felt like real people and it wasn't just like you know brad's a technician and blah 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 and he's here to you know, get get laid and one, mm-hmm. one thing i still don't quite understand i've watched so much terrace house at this point but like why is it so socially awkward in the beginning is japan just like a socially awkward culture i mean that's what this show is kind of teaching me like of course everyone you know gets comfortable quickly but i mean i just it's very rare that i have like a first meeting with someone that's as awkward it's like almost every first meeting in terrace house you know living in the west the pressure of this is being filmed they know it's being filmed and i'm also about to live with them like you're going on a blind date with Mm. someone you're gonna live with for the next mm. month two months three months but yeah but in contrast right and this is why i like terrace house i like this right but i mean just watch the real world like first meetings are not they're completely different when you're living and this again you know that's the best thing you can compare it to because people living in a house together it's just so yeah. it's so different man like people yeah. like uh in real world and even like jersey shore you know i hate evoking that name but like they're getting drunk and like partying and doing all kinds of bullshit like night one it's crazy yeah, I think the difference, though, is that, at least with Jersey Shore, unfortunately... I don't know that much that, about that show, by the way, full disclosure. Yeah, but that, that whole thing, the whole show is about them living in that house, right? Whereas with Terrace House, the show is, they live there, but they also still keep their jobs. They still do yeah. Yeah. their normal... Like, they still live their lives. Their they just happen life, yeah. to come home to a different home, right? Yeah. Um, but for me, with my first episode, the first episode I actually saw was the first episode of Aloha State. And uh, I was like, Oof. okay, this is interesting. It's fine. It's kind of weird that it's in America, like that it's it's Japanese, but in quote unquote America in Hawaii. Um, and then I read, I think online on Reddit or something that like, oh, actually the first one chronologically was BGITC. So I was like, okay, I'll give that one a shot. And after the first, like I always have this rule with TV shows that give the first three episodes a fair shake because that's a much Ooh. better, it gives you a better idea of what the show actually is instead of just the first Mm-hmm. Um, so I watched the first three episodes and at that point I was like hooked because Tap fucking murdered someone's dreams and I was like okay there's there's some Tap drama here but it's not them. like overblown like who gets the rose this week what date will they go on there's you no know? constructed who's gonna sleep like, with who like there's no yeah. like false constructed fucking game you know so right. wait how did you first hear about the show uh, well, actually, let's just go to the next question because that's actually what that next question is, right? It is. Yeah. So this one from Jonathan on our Discord. Uh, how did you guys first find out about Terrace House? Parentheses. I found out about it when I was trying when I was trying to find MTV's The Real World, which, Yay. funny enough, we were just talking about The Real World, Yay. right? Um, Old school. So for me, I actually found out about it through another podcast that I listened to, My Brother, My Brother and Me. They were talking about it like years ago. I was like, I don't know what the show is, but they keep saying that it's like the 
it's better than The Bachelor, and it like kind of defies all reality TV. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. They said and it's better than The Bachelor. <laughs> basically, yeah, that's funny. Because one of them does did a Bachelor podcast, and they got to the point where they were like, I hate doing this podcast. Let's just talk about Tara's house instead. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Um, so that was that was how I found out about it. I know. I think Colin and Jack, both of you, said that I've told you about it, right? So am I the vector in this? I don't have. Yeah, a, well, I, I don't have a long <sighs> answer. Yeah, Robert told me about it. I wanted to hate it. I watched it and I loved it. That's my. Story. Yeah, like I I had heard about it from uh, I think a professor at school, and then I think mm. I asked you about it at some point. I can't remember if I watched it before or after I asked you about it. Um, but yeah, so that that's kind of basically where I heard about it. Right. I had the the horrifying experience of this weirdo named colin coming Damn. up to me in class and Seven. being like hey have Six you ever watched chair. tara's house <laughs> <laughs> and then that evolved into hey do you want to do a tara's house podcast what mm. made you want to um colin what made you want to even approach daily about the show at all well, I thought she Why was really me? weird, and uh, ah. <laughs> I was just like, "Wow, she could be interesting to have it up." But no, I'm joking. Uh, no, I so I actually met Daily like purely by chance. I think we were being given a tour of like campus because we both moved to Seattle and we're going to UW, mm. and uh, we just st started talking about no Daily actually overheard video game talk. Wasn't that what it was? I was uh, like, video games? Yeah. Nerds. I don't have friends. I need you're, to make friends. Right. Hey, Daily, you're always hovering around. Games. You're looking for, like, Naruto friends. You're looking for video <laughs> game friends. You're just, like, got your feelers out there. Like, anyone drops a I hit, I'm jumping on them. That's right. Or maybe it was me that was, like, maybe I overheard you and a friend talking video games, and then I butted in. I don't remember. It was one of those two. Um, video games. And then you and I got to talking, and you said you did podcasting. And you liked Japan and you had a lot of interest in like, you know, Japanese media and stuff like that. And so I put two and two together. And I was like, because I knew we were talking about doing a uh, Terra Sauce podcast because when we were doing Tiny Disc, that was some of our like top viewed episodes that we had put out. Definitely. Um, and so we were talking about that. We actually we desperately wanted a, a female perspective because I, I, especially for a show like Terra Sauce, I think it's definitely necessary. Um, It'd be kind of. Weird. Yeah, and so I was like, Daly's got you, you podcasting dudes. experience. She likes Japanese stuff. And I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. And I uh, guess. <laughs> I, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. He's okay. A, so I was. So I'm like, I'm gonna ask Daly if uh, she'd be interested in this. And so I told you, I was like, listen, give Ty Terrace House a try. Let me know what you think, and then we'll talk about auditioning you for the show. And you came in and killed it. So, mm -hmm. I murdered. Yeah, everyone. the rest is history. She yes. did. We're all we're ghosts. Dead now. Yep, we're actually we're all dead. Yeah. We just we're we're ghost slaves to daily now. Mm. Yeah, what? I'm a necromancer. <laughs> That's yeah. a good premise for another podcast, guys. <laughs> Save, <laughs> let's put that in the file folder there. Yeah, but on on that note, I, I don't want to mansplain this or anything, but I I do want to say that I don't I don't think that Daily necessarily represents like the entire female. Oh, of course view, not. Right, because that that makes no sense. Oh, I do. Right? Like, Fuck that, Daily. Oh, you speak for all okay. women. Uh, Screw it. Okay. Uh, oh, right, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Daily is. Uh, yeah, all women. you 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 officially carry I, that weight on your back. How do you feel? <laughs> okay, good. That is. I mean, crushed. I feel like, crushed. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Atlas shrugged. Um. No, but uh, also, like, you know, bonus, if you want to go back there and dig in the crates for the old uh, Tiny Disc episodes, I don't know what numbers they were, but we did do, like, what, three, four episodes Something covering, like uh, yeah, Terrace House, and they were, like, definitely our more popular episodes, probably of the entire series, which is another, was the impetus of us creating this show, right? Um, mm -hmm. But you can listen to the, what it sounds like for three idiot boys talking about Terrace House, because that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, essentially. You can hear how much but, worse yeah. I was at podcasting. Not that I'm better, not that much better now, but... Yeah. But the, the point I wanted to make is that, like, we all don't know everyone's worldview, right? Like, we're not going to have the perspective of people who've grown up in other places or have lived through certain tragic events, right? We're just four idiots who can talk speak well, for yourself man sort that of. should also be <laughs> our in, our about instead of um filthy content great Wait, content no. at a filthy cost great, great content, content at a filthy, at a filthy price. cost <laughs> yeah. yeah it's good stuff it's our next um, t-shirt three idiot boys <laughs> <laughs> and then me <laughs> 
Uh, next question here. This one comes from Rosie the newbie, but newbie is spelled with two zeros. Hey. Uh, on our Discord, Rosie asks, out of all the Terrace House members from all the series that you've watched, in your opinions, who was the most infuriating member to mm. watch? Mm. Mm. Well, I will say this, Rosie. I've never met a bad Rosie, so you got to be a good person because every person I've ever met named Rosie, A1. A1. Mm. Steak sauce. Yeah, that's all. That's all I want to say. Steak sauce. So. Okay. <laughs> Okay. That's, that's uh, all you want to say. Oh, I guess I'll take the answer or the question too. But the, yes. please do. The easy answer here. The easy answer here is you die. I'm not going to do that though right now. For me, the most infuriating person to watch, maybe out of left field, I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to say Lauren Sai was infuriating to watch. Interesting. Because, wow. because no one had, to me, more potential. And left me feeling so flat. So most disappointing, maybe maybe not most infuriating. You, uh, Yui, super infuriating to watch. Cannot stand mm -hmm. that person. Don't ever want to see her again. Get out of my world. Get out of my life. I'm done with Ooh. you. Yes, I'm done with Yui. I'm so done angry. With but um, yeah, I just I mean, it's, she just ruined the last part of Terrace House O and D for me. Like just made it a bullshit show that I didn't care about. Um, but yeah. Those, the, I'll leave the rest for other people. Nah, sorry, sorry if I picked anyone. Uh, for me, well, I know I know we talked about not spoiling Aloha State, but I'll just we have to daily. If you want to like closures or feel free, yeah. So, for, do you guys remember Sherry from Aloha State? <laughs> oh, she was totally. <sighs> No, she was what the fuck did she do at the last part? She there? was one of the, probably one of the ah. worst people on the show. Easy. Yes. Easy. Yes. She was starting drama because she was guilty as hell. She was like sleeping with like a what real estate people or something. Ah. Uh, it, it was really bad. Really bad. She was trifling. Trifling. Yeah. She. Oh God. What a mess she was. And no, she got a huge fight with Taishi, and yeah, it was a whole thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. For me, I think... <sighs> hmm. When it comes to, like, infuriating people, I don't know. I don't get that... I mean, I get angry at these people, sure, but I don't... Like, I don't go as far as Jack, who's like, I never want to see Yui again. Like, if Yui showed up at Tokyo 2020 <laughs> somehow, for whatever reason, I'd welcome it. No. Just because I'd want to well, see how she's changed, if at all. No, to see the dra I want to see her with drama. I'm emotionally invested in the show. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you want to see her walk into Tokyo 2020 and be like, so I've been watching you guys on Netflix, and I have a I wanna, list of questions. <laughs> yeah, I want to <laughs> see her pass out um, uh, uh, minion socks to everyone except, like, two people. Just to see what happens. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just in person, like, none for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, hmm. I don't know. Par partially for me, I think Masao kind of gets up there. And in terms really? of like watching, yeah, because you know, frustrating. There's, there's, you mean to watch? Yeah, yeah, because there's a lot yeah. about him that he could do right, but then he kind of blows it just by saying like, "Oh, you're the woman of my dreams." Oh, you're like the cutest girl I've ever seen. You know, like he he just he kind of just out of nowhere slips in these really like Shakespearean almost levels of dramatic romance. Yeah, he lives it on a life, little too like, thick. And it's like, dude, just chill. Like, you make great curry. You play the bass. Everyone knows you can finger well. Just <laughs> chill. Here we go. Be relaxed. <laughs> um, he was very... <laughs> Daily's face right now. He was very... Um, he's just so inept. Like, dude. Like, Christ. And like the way... And also the way he used to date and just bug people until they agreed to go out with him. Like, he, le he grew up uh, learning all the wrong lessons. Yeah. You know? So it is frustrating. I agree. I can see it. Mm-hmm. Daily, do you have an infuriating member? Man, I guess I, I have to say Yui, just because I yeah. rooted for her so hard at the beginning. Yeah. I was like, she she's very pure. She's very, you know, trying her best. She became the house mom and mm. taking care of everybody's stuff. And then she became this, like, manipulative person all, like I think it was always there but like all of a sudden it felt like you know she just did this heel turn and ruined it for herself and and for me and oh. I I did mm. not like her getting together with Io either like yeah. Io also kind of got on my nerves sometimes because mm -hmm. it was like he was just very content to just be like okay 
And he picked his nose. And he picked his nose. And the sign of sin. And he picked his nose. Yeah, he. They kind of ruined. Yeah, O and D. The ending for me as well too. And and Yui's very clicky now. If you follow her on Instagram, like she is very close with very select few people. So it's like it kind of broke up the house uh, camaraderie. Right, like mm. there ever was a reunion. Mm. You see, past houses uh, get together in big groups, and I just can't picture that with O and D with Yui and Risiko in the same room anymore. Right, it's unfortunate. Yep. Uh, next question we've got here, another one from Conch Bubby. Uh, hey. I've got a question for the guys and Daily, respectively. For the guys, who did you think were the best looking girls, and for Daily, who well, who did you think was the best looking guy in all the Terrace House that you've watched? Mm. Conch oh. Bubby. I, I swing both ways. Hey. Everyone is beautiful. Hey, <laughs> it's true. I mean, hey. I, I guess that, that just factors into the next question here from Zach on our Discord. I think it would be interesting for them all to answer best looking guys and best looking girls. I totally want to hear Jack, Robert, and Colin's debate on best looking guy. Hmm. So Yo. let's just go around Robin here. Yo. Jack, who's the best looking guy and girl? <laughs> Dude, we've talked about it. This is old news. Zach, listen to our show. What the fuck? <laughs> it's Got like, uh, it's Haruka. Or no, not Haruka. That's oh a my God. Is it? <laughs> Damn, stumble no, the what's gate. the name of the guy? I talked about him. The guy, mm-hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio looking dude. From? From Boys and Girls in the City. I told the construction hat. Oh, Hikaru. 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 Oh, I got him in with Haruka. Yeah, Hikaru, I think, is one of the best looking dudes. Yep. He's like yeah, model easily. good looking. It's Absolutely. not like that He's realistic yeah. kind of good looking. <laughs> dude, I wouldn't hate my life if but, I look I like mean, that shit. I don't know. I don't. You are so surprised, yeah. Neely. Yeah. Maybe it's just because I'm thinking about his personality no, too. No, we're just, yeah. we're just like pure looks. That, him. Yeah, that wasn't a, that just wasn't in the question. Looks. Just pure looks. Okay, just pure looks. Tai what about, what about girl for you? My wife. I'm married. Okay, I'm not oh, suicidal wow. here. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> you lost your wow. damn minds. My wife is gorgeous. She's beautiful, and I love what her. What episode of Terrace House was she on? I, I don't think I caught her. <laughs> yeah, my my wife. My wife. Wife. my wife my wife uh daily what about you boy and girl boy and girl so right now everyone knows i am intensely infatuated with kauri she's mm. so cute i love her smile i love her style i love i love her <laughs> <laughs> i love her um as far as guy goes though um that's harder definitely not ikaru not ikaru, not ikaru. Guys. <laughs> Not also, Hikaru. also, you've only seen two seasons of Terrace House, so yeah. So I, I don't have, yeah. I don't have a ton of guys to pick. Probably Armon, though. Mm. Really, like, I'm when surprised. He's by that. actually emoting versus <laughs> like not emoting ever. <laughs> there are times when he smiles and it's dazzling. Wow, I'm mm. I'm surprised by that. I got that. No, yeah, I get before that. or after he chipped his tooth. Uh, <sighs> after, uh, I like, me. I like, I think that's cute. I think. I mean, like, <laughs> Little quirks. <laughs> For the record, I think he's good looking he too. He's probably my number two. But I'm when I say I'm surprised, I'm surprised Daly said that. That's what I mean. Hmm. I didn't know that would be in her type. My I <laughs> guess like my types are like very manly men and then very feminine women. Mm, so the extremes. Yeah. Okay. I mean in between. That's cool too. Interesting. Oh, I don't hmm. I don't discriminate. Same. The discrimination uh, podcast. So I want to say up no. front, there, so we all know this for fact because we, we say it all the time, how most of them are models and or actors. So generally speaking, everyone on Terrace House is at some level of attractive. Yeah. yeah. You know I what mean, I mean? Like someone, someone's going to find at least like every one of them has their fans of in terms of mm. who's the prettiest, right? right? Um, for me, when I think of guys, I think... Like, Noah is the kind of good looking where it's like, fuck you for looking that good. You know what I mean? Like, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you walk in with that face and that body? <laughs> but <laughs> in terms of uh, one that I actually like, I, mean, I actually kind of like Hansan. Yeah, Hansan like, was Hansan's one of my picks. That, he's like, he's a modest, but like, he knows he looks good, but he's not going to be like, he won't tell you that. Mm, look at my body, right? Yeah, he's just like, he's there. He he does well enough. He does up his hair a bit. And yeah, he's, good. he's got that like bedhead, um, like kind of irked architect slash, slash writer look going on with the with the cardigans. And I was like, he I was like, this yeah. is my aesthetic. And I hate that he makes smoking cigarettes look so cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good at doing that. He makes it look good. He does make it look good. <laughs> uh, 
in terms of girls, in terms of just pure looks, Ami is pretty cute from early O and D. Mm. Mm. Yes, I liked mm-hmm. her a lot, dude. Very popular girl. I personally never saw it. Man, in her, she was a victim of editing. Lots of people liked her. Uh, I'll, lots of people yeah. liked her, man. She was a victim of editing, though, in a lot of in a lot of ways. Right, yeah. Colin. Uh, what about you? What's your vanity speak so to? So Hansan, of course, has already talked about. I, I liked him a lot. I liked his personality. I liked the way he looks. Um, guy, still going on the guys. Takayuki Nakamura from Opening New Doors. Yeah, he's one good looking motherfucker, yeah. and he has the personality to go with it. Very humble guy. A lot of raw, wise words to say. He gets a little caught up in in the women woman situation, but yeah, I thought he yeah, was handsome. But like him either way. Definitely kills it with the the mustache. He's one. I think he's the only guy that's been on the show. I'm like he's mm. killing it with that mustache. He needs to keep that going. Mm. Yeah. When when he shaved, he lost like points. One hundred percent. I was like, no, I Definitely. love the mustache. Yeah, keep yeah, the mustache. Same. Yeah. Um, uh, girls, uh, Mizuki is is still my first Terrace House love. Uh, one of one of the really? first girls on Boys and Girls in the City. Uh, she yeah, cool. she was she was really cool, and she kind of got screwed over by Arman. Um, because I really thought they had something yeah. going yeah. there. Um, so yeah. it's kind of upsetting. And uh, Kaori is like the newest. She's kind of got got my heart in the house right now in terms of, of girls mm. uh, currently. And then uh, Lauren Sai, I actually really like Lauren Sai a ton in contrast to Jack. There's nothing to like. What is to like? <laughs> She's talented. Uh, stop. This stop. isn't a debate. I'm sorry. I haven't I'm watched just, it. I'm and just I want throwing to love questions her. out there to I the know. She's sorry. talented. I don't want She's answer. slightly awkward. And I, li- I, I like slightly awkward girls for some reason. So. Mm. <sighs> Let me do my impression of Lauren Tsai. That's it. That was a boring face. Congratulations <laughs> for giving us some dead wow. podcast wow. air. Wow, everyone. <laughs> exactly. Lauren Sai is the dead air of Terrence. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I like Lauren. Lauren's great. <laughs> She's cool. I like her. Please oh, be man. on our podcast, Lauren. <laughs> that too. Yeah. But, but generally, I did, I did like her on Aloha State. I did too. Um, I also like. I want to change my answer for girl. It, it's uh, <gasps> Aya. Not, not Ani. Aya, Who's the girl Aya? who liked Taka a lot. Mm. The Garu oh, yeah. girl, yeah, the Garu. Yeah, Garu oh wow, yep. I listen. I don't want to dwell on this too long, but I just realized why I don't like Ami that much. It's not because necessarily what she was like. She wasn't receptive to the guys, whatever. But I think the reason why I don't like Ami so much from OND is because I like Taka so much, and Ami. I kind of uh. blame Ami in a way for making Taka look mm. stupid, even though it's not her fault. It's unfair. No, it's very right, fair. She made him look stupid, <laughs> or he looks stupid because of her. I don't know which way. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Loyalty. Yeah. Let's move on to our next question here. This is the last one from Conch Bubby on Discord. My last question: Who are some people that you wish became couples? Ooh, Yikes. Daily, do you want to kick us off? I I really did see Armand and Misaki working out really well. Mm. I I liked the the camaraderie that mm-hmm. they had, and they even were able to continue that. You know, after he started um, pursuing. The hat lady. <laughs> Arisa. <laughs> Arisa. I couldn't summon her name. Yeah. But I I really, I, I wanted that to happen, especially considering what then happened. I, mm. I wanted something for Misaki, and I wanted, and I thought that Wait. they were a good pair together. Mizuki. Uh, Wait, well, you right. think Mizuki? Mizuki. Yeah, I was going to say, I was really confused. That was one of the, yes. Misaki ends up with That's Burns. That's one of the saddest parts. Yeah, that was the saddest part of O&D for me, or um, Boys and Girls City, where Mizuki and Tapper in the room, like, I guess we're the losers. We're going to leave tomorrow now. Oh. Oh, the uh, ruins. It was rough. Yeah. It was so damn sad. I don't know. In terms of couples, do, Colin, do you uh, have any? I mean, we did an entire episode about this kind of, our Misconnections episode. Um, yeah, that was per specifically season, for, yeah, for yeah, O&D, that's, I think. that's true. Yeah. Um, but in terms of couples, I wish I would have ended up together. Yeah, I mean, Mizuki and Armand's definitely a given. Uh, goodness gracious. I got one if you need time. Yeah, give me time. Okay. Okay, uh, Dahlia, you might want to earmuffs this for like 60 seconds. Oh, no. Okay, guys. Fucking, t- I at the time wanted Tai Chi and fucking Lauren Sai together so bad. They walk <laughs> to the fucking park. Lauren just stares at him, doesn't say anything. It's one of the shittiest moments ever. And I, that's another reason why I don't like Lauren because she's so fucking boring on that show. I'm sorry. I'm just Damn, going, off. going so in. I need to calm you down. So but Tai Chi and Lauren would have made maybe the most beautiful Asian babies 
in the history of humanity and they couldn't get together so those are the two i really wanted and fuck i was mad about that that it was so frustrating to watch yeesh you are angry all right daily's coming hmm. back daily's back okay Hi, daily. i gotta so since this episode is all about kind of peeling back the curtain a little bit the way we do this is we're we're on discord and we have you know one screen with all four of us in the mm-hmm. webcam so that we can you know talk to each other without trying to interrupt each other the gestures that were happening just now <laughs> by <laughs> jack you were you felt some feelings about this i don't know what it was but you were like I thought I was watching a presidential debate. <laughs> he was mad. I have a lot of, yeah, I have a lot of uh, repressed anger about that. <laughs> what I just talked about, okay. I guess. I'm learning about that right now. Sheesh. <laughs> uh, for me, I, I know Han San at the time was a taken man, right? I would have loved to man. see what a relationship between him and Natsumi would have looked like. Only yep. because he would have grounded her. And I'm very curious how that how that would have changed the way we view her on Boys and Girls in the City. Obviously, now they're both happy and on their own, right? Like Natsumi is currently pregnant and married, or maybe she just had the, she she had the baby. Had the baby yeah. Yeah. Great yes. for her. Uh, I believe Hansan is currently dating someone else, so he's happy as well. So you know, now where they are now, I'm happy for them. But I would have been interested to see how that would have developed, maybe on TV. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. Gosh, mm-hmm. I honestly, I think you guys covered a lot of the, the bases that I wanted to hit. The Hansan was actually my 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 cue. So I can't think of any of the other big ones off the top of my head. Was there any potential ones that that Hansan date Hansan? Yeah, Hansan date Hansan. Was there any big ones that I'm I'm missing that I could have hit? Like almost mm-hmm. almost ones. Yeah, I mean Kaito what? and Maya. Oh yeah, did. that's true. Here here's something I want to throw at the table. Uh, this is just a, a Robert Scarponito original question. What guy would have been perfect for Shunsuke out of all the Terrace House we've Ooh. seen? <sighs> Hansan, duh. Hansan, <laughs> duh. Well, he's perfect for I everyone. I mean, Hansan's best for everyone. Yes. <laughs> yep. Everyone needs a Hansan in their life. I yes. mean, he tried. He went really Maybe... hard on to to try and get court soda, essentially. Yeah. I could almost see <laughs> them soda, yeah. kind of working out, like. They would they would maybe balance each other out a little bit, and they yeah. had a they had a pretty good camaraderie. Like Shinsuke just needed to to he was figuring himself out, and then he kind of like mellowed out once he was like, okay, I'm comfortable with this. I I understand now that I could see myself dating a man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But no. I mean, I can't really picture with him with anyone else in particular. I guess. Man. So I'd like to throw out Hikaru Ota. Because Hikaru has Yo. the manly manliness of being a construction worker, but he still has that sensitive side because he also wants to be an actor. Oh yeah, and I feel like that would probably. I feel like Shunsuke would be about mesh. that if he was I in think... the house. I don't. I just see no sensitive side from him. Ask fucking Misaki. Hell no. <laughs> That's true. He did utterly he destroy dick. her. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I'm just saying. I could. I could see something there. I mean, they but, look good together walking down the street. I mean, hold, it's all just hold fancy. my construction. Hold my hammer. Hold, hold my hammer I'm going oh my in. god my hammer is uh, my penis yeah, I get it <laughs> thanks uh, dude <laughs> it's a reference it was uh, here's another question uh, from Instagram from Red Lagunda I want to say yes uh, what's they up asked, Red Lagunda's been with us for a while what's up Red Lagunda hell Yo. yeah shout out uh, they ask I don't get why they let the housemates watch the more recent episodes doesn't that make for awkward situations not unless you're stirring things up which kind of makes it which makes it kind of scripted thinking emoji Mm. Jack so I agree like it is weird it's unconventional and in a way I like that about Terrace House it's it's just another way for it to differentiate itself from the pack of reality shows and it can't i mean of course it fucks with what we would consider to be a natural dynamic you know natural um relationship progression we just learned that recently in watching what was it episode six of terror's house episode five can't remember the six yeah episode six. yeah where everyone's watching together in a room and then haruka kind of shrivels up she's like oh no he knows i think he's cute now and it's just like it's it is awkward to watch but it's fascinating in a way to see how it uh, it can't help but influence their d- 
decision making, right? And their actions. I mean, they're going to get feedback from Twitter, from Instagram, from everywhere on what the Terrace House community, the watchers, the viewership thinks about their actions. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're going to change that. So, you know, go into it knowing that they are influenced by what is shown on TV. Um, it doesn't ruin the show for me. But, yeah, you are right. It does um, does influence things. Yeah, I kind of share the same feelings yeah. as Jack. Um, I think that it adds an yeah. interesting dynamic to the show that you're not going to get anywhere else. And I think it also makes the show feel more realistic in a way. Uh, because knowing that yeah. you're being filmed all the time, but then you can't watch that thing, that's kind of weird. Because... Our, our tendency would be like, yeah, I want to watch the tape and, and see what happens, even though it's probably going to be embarrassing and cringy. You know, so I think yeah. especially this season, we had a scene where everyone in the house was sitting to, down together and watching the, the first episode together. And I was like, that's got to be that's got to be some feelings. That's yeah. that's got to be a lot of uh, that definitely is going to change things the way you see people. And it does. It does cause ripples in the house. Yeah. Right. For me, I think the most unreal part that I've ever seen out of reality television, and there's many very unreal things to reality television, mm -hmm. is that in stuff like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette is that they are doing this for however many weeks and they don't have access to their phones, they don't have access to internet. And it's like in the past that kind of made sense, but now we live in such a connected world that it's like, you're going to get some weird behavior just because people are unable to access a very large part of their everyday life. Like, in fact, the last like two seasons have been significantly affected by the fact that people weren't able to access information about the person that they were dating that everyone else knew, but they were unable to know. Like there were cheating oh, scandals, etc. That's interesting. That didn't that ruined relationships because it was like hey now that we're actually able to connect on the internet i saw on twitter that you said this and that's fucked up so i i appreciate it i appreciate that they acknowledge the reality of like hey we're on a tv show and we're able to access that when it premieres because it'd be weird if we weren't allowed to and then like other people were trying to tell us about it um, and then we'd have that bias through their lens of the people that are trying to tell me like, hey, person said you were cute. What? Yeah. Like not having that actual context of watching on right. TV. And to, but, yeah. Um, yeah, so to but it real absolutely quickly, is meant to stir up mm, drama. Sorry. Um, to real quickly build on that, hashtag Mayu was right about Yui. She called her mm. Instagram shit out right away and kind yeah. of proved later in the, in the season that, yeah, Yui is less than genuine. Yeah, I, I I would argue this doesn't make it more quote unquote scripted. I think when they say scripted, they mean like oh they don't like they're not rehearsing lines, right? Like sure, you're gonna like them, they're gonna like you, but there's gonna be triangle like yeah, not scripted. Yeah, like that. I mean, and I'm sure producers influence things, right? They probably say like oh hey, sit, like I want you to have this conversation in this room so we can film it or whatever, right? Like that totally probably happens, and that's probably the most scripted it gets. But I don't think that them watching old clips of themselves would change anything if anything it makes them think of it like football right it makes them a better player in the terrace house game because they're able to watch old reels you know they're able to watch clips see what they did wrong or right see what other people did wrong or right and it kind of makes it this whole game without making it feel like an actual you know who's going to get the rose right you know it's it's a weird uh, it, it makes terrace house stand out like jack said so uh, yeah i like it. i would I would go so far as to say that there might be, I mean, pretty much everyone's in Terrace House is paying attention to social media. They're always yeah. on their phone constantly. Like it goes without saying, like we can safely assume that. And I would venture to even say that I think maybe social media feedback has perhaps pushed people out of the house. Meaning if you keep seeing mm. comments like, hey, get mm -hmm. the fuck out of here, just leave, just what are you doing here, blah, 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 you know, things like that. Like, oh, they should leave, da, da, da. I, I could definitely see that being an influence on someone's actual behavior on the show. I mean, it influenced Yui. She like almost didn't pursue a career. Totally, of that, yeah, right? easily. Um, so it's that's another really crazy wrinkle, and it makes the show even more modern. Yeah, yeah. In the age of social Definitely media, so and I think it would, uh, in contrast, it would be really strange if uh, if they went out of their way to like not show the members of the house watching the show. If that makes sense, 
So if if they were watching the show off screen and it doesn't really get brought up, but you're noticing changes in behavior. Mm. I mean, it's realistic, right. right? Because you can't sequester them. Right. It's not that kind of show. You know, you can't make them sign a contract saying, no, I'm not going to watch the show when it's happening real time. Like, right. If they have access to internet, right. so might I mean, well unless they it. block Netflix, yeah. like they're going to have access yeah. to the show. I mean, they're just going to go yeah. watch it while they're pooping if you try and ban it. Right. Perfect. That's yes. that's where they watch it, actually. <laughs> um, but anyway. Let's, let's move on to the next question that we got here. Another one from Instagram from Weeks Ringle, I want to say. What's say up, that? Weeks Ringle? What's up? What up? Uh, Weeks Ringle asks, I want a 30s to 40s version of Terrace House with Kyuji Tukacho and adults who have lived or who have had more life experiences. Also, there have been too many models. Please show people with professional skills and interests. Uh, this isn't really a question, but we wanted to pick it just because, like, I mean, for me personally, I agree. There are way too many models. We've always said this. And it just kind of yeah. feels like we're watching the same people sometimes. It, yeah. It's our official mm-hmm. stance. Less models. Less months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like this, this season has been interesting because it's like, yeah, there's a bunch of like models and actors, but they're also doing other things like driving fast cars and everything. It's, in and it feels weird. Because it feels weird to call Shohei a model or actor either because he's just the, as that as much as everything else he's doing. Yeah. He's a renaissance yeah. man. He's also doing carpentry. <laughs> yeah. And so stuff, I, yeah. I think he is. He really is. Yeah. He's trying to become the jack of all trades but i think i think they're making it a point at least this this season here to diversify the cast and and go out of the way i think there's probably some common feedback that producers get uh at terrace house is that yeah there's too many models we want to have people on the show that feel more grounded than that people can really latch on to and that's only going to help their viewership and make the show more interesting right if if they have more people that are mm-hmm. grounded in reality um, because that that way it just, it's just more relatable. Uh, now, mm-hmm. for me, I don't know if I am as interested in having an all thirties to forties year old cast of Terrace House. I think it'd be interesting to have a forty year old in the house with everyone else as they are now, because yeah. then there's like a different perspective, Subasa's like a, dad, like a true generational gap. Subasa's dad, for example, <laughs> where there's actual wisdom that can be passed on within the house. But once everyone there is around the same age bracket, we get the same thing that we get now, where there, there isn't much that's being exchanged. We notice like the 30 year olds maybe give guiding information to the younger 20 year olds. Right. But if everyone were 30, it's kind of like, eh. I would like to see one class of Terrace House that is older you know maybe the median age is maybe in the 30s Mm. right i would like to see at least one group one set of six right um but uh, to me this is a reaction like i had the same reaction as um as as yeah as this question is saying whereas this is all about yui like ruining (laughs) the end of ond with this immature high school kindergarten middle school bullshit you know Mm. and so that like with a older more mature group you would think that this kind of bullshit would be less likely to happen and i want to see like real problems get addressed i want to see people really grow and that's maybe some a want i want i feel like a lot of people hit the ejector seat on terrace house before they actually have a resolution you know yeah uh, you guys one of them like a lot of people pop out way too early and maybe they're just a lost cause but like i would like to see some true true progression Growth. i mean armand is kind of yeah armand is kind of a good Example of, you know, someone staying there for a long time and going through several arcs before having a happy ending. So yeah. I want right. more of that and stuff. I, but I think that it's it's not, it's a nice to have thing for someone to have an arc on the show. Right. Because in a way that reflects real life. Right. Real life doesn't really work with in arcs, per se. It's more so it's more realistic that people decide to leave before something happens in their life or decide to, you know, or they hit a milestone and then they decide to leave. Uh, so I, I think that we ha- having a mixture of that is only realistic because it, not everyone's life is going to be, have a section of it that's just tied up in a little bow and it's just finished. And then they decide to leave. But I like I, it. I, but yes. that's, that's not <laughs> reality TV. It. That's just TV. That would just be a TV show. But yeah. I like Grab, it. Wrap it up well, in a 23 minute that. time span. I want it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it always depends, right? Because everyone's always at a different place in their journey through life when they enter Terra's house, right? Like, you have Hansan, who's kind of at his peak. Like, his arc was just school. 
you know, and then he kind of helped everyone else with their arcs. He, if he they was happened. already having, he was already having an awesome life. He was just kind enough to let us in on it for a little yeah, bit. Exactly. Like everyone is, is different where they are. Like you was perhaps way before his growth arc, you know? So we didn't really get to see anything like that. That's just kind of how yep. life works. Right. He might not even ever get an arc. Yeah. Maybe. But um, in terms of having uh, a house full of older people, not that I would be opposed. I think it, working it in as a class could be, much more interesting, but I, I feel like having all older people uh, kind of wouldn't be Terrace House in certain ways, right? I think in some ways it would appeal to a different demographic. Dude, how much older are you thinking? I'm just thinking like five, six years now, now, older. If they're doing not... like into the four, like a lot of people all in their mid 30s to late or er, to early 40s, then I, I, I could be different. I mean, early 30s, I, I guess, could. I don't know. It could it it could depend. Well, if you like sex, I think there'd be a lot more sex. <laughs> okay, I want oh all forty nine year olds. All that's what I'm saying to you. I, I, I the fact that you, I don't know. I think that's pretty controversial. You say it wouldn't be the same old Terrace House. I it would have a different um, vibe. I guess is what I would say. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the opinion that people is people. Mm -hmm. Some of the same bullshit is gonna happen all your life doesn't matter what age you are yeah like we might be giving people too much credit for yeah. being like fair mature enough as they age like people people can people suck be children for their whole life definitely and that's not necessarily like a bad thing like you're allowed to keep learning as you grow like there's no one year where you suddenly gain all the information that you need to function as an adult it's a learning curve it, it keeps on going yeah. for me fair. i just so think, i don't yeah. i don't think a whole lot would change for me i just think like i keep saying i just want to avoid i really hated what happened with the ue incident i think a lot of people attribute that to her immaturity and her inexperience so i think the spirit of this of this comment is that we just want to avoid that happening in the future i would really hate it if it devolved into socks and shit for mm. Tokyo 2019-2020. Sucks. Like, please, I, can we stop? Fucking sucks. I just, it just want, sucks. I just want a good spread of ages. I think that's a lot more interesting than I everyone agree. being 22 or everyone being 33 or everyone mm -hmm. being 44. I you know, I, I think that the spread of ages helps because, like, yes, I agree with Daily that just because you're 44 doesn't necessarily mean you have to be more mature than a 22-year-old. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, you're going to be at a different point in your life when you're 44 than when you're 22. You may not change you know your personality but you're dealing with a lot more shit at 44 you know yeah. potentially and, and if you just so if you just think about it from the angle of uh you're a showrunner right you're one of the producers and you run a show like this reality tv show you're more than likely going to want to have uh, a myriad of different ages and personalities and and traits and skills and jobs because you want to diversify a show like this as much as possible you want to have a, a person that all kinds of different people that are watching can relate to and latch on to and give them a reason to keep watching. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, okay. I feel like I, not, not that it would, I don't think it would, I would see, I would still watch a show if it was all over older people, I would still definitely still watch it. But I think to a wider audience, that's not say as hardcore as we are. I think that it would alienate some people because they, they don't feel like they can relate as much. Because there are there people worrying about different uh, things or have different occupations, right? So we've got two more questions here. I want to save the best for last. So let's go with Mad Flamingo here uh, from Discord. Uh, I really like this question here. Uh, yo, you guys make so epic podcasts. Lol. I always listen to them while playing League. <laughs> Raw XD. Cool. Good game. <laughs> Uh, don't get tilted. Yeah, don't get tilted. Also, only play Singe Top. Uh, with which Terrace House character do you identify the most? Excluding Hansan, of course. If someone, if one of you said Hansan, Hansan, I'd just Hansan. laugh in your face. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? Is that we all that's like Hansan. like, I am God. Yeah, yeah. we all like Hansan. <laughs> yeah. None of us are Hansan. No one on Earth is Hansan except Hansan. Who do we identify with the most? Yeah, does anyone have an answer, like, right off the mm. top here? Uh... It's a tough it's, one, it's, right? Off the top of my head, I, I'm thinking uh, Taka, because I I think a lot of what happens because you can snowboard. Yeah, well, not mm -hmm. I. I can't definitely cannot snowboard. I can't anything board. Um, but I think that in the way that he tries to give people sage advice, right, and kind of tries to life coach people a little bit. Um, like I've definitely had a handful of experiences like that uh, with myself. 
Um, and also the way that like he has his personality, his very strong personality, and he's kind of knows what he wants to do with his life. But also when he gets involved with relationships with women or whatever, it kind of trips him up a little bit and it changes him too. And I've, I've definitely been like in some ways guilty of that. So like, I kind of know where he's coming from, uh, mm. but he finds his way out of it. Right. And he becomes his, his self again. And so like, I've definitely had experiences with that and I've learned from it. So I don't know. I, and I feel like Taka just makes himself a really welcoming personality. So in that way, I'm, I'm drawn to him too, as a viewer. Mm-hmm. I don't know for me it's uh god I don't remember her name because she was on the show for like two episodes but in OND there was that one girl who would go back to her Korean ex Mizuki oh yeah Mizuki, that's Mizuki yes. too <laughs> that's who you all are all the Mizukis are doomed could you crawl back to your ex <laughs> no but I, I can I'm trying to think of like writers on the show and there are very few writers but for her, there was a lot of like overlap because, you know, I grew up in Korea. She spends a lot of time in Korea. She writes about fashion. I once worked at a fashion company as a copywriter, right? Um, it's either her or like the one eighth of Shohei that's a writer, like 220 Shohei, because yeah, he does like, uh, like 80 other eighth, things. Yeah. But he <laughs> also is mental gymnastics to picture this here. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, I'm a writer by trade and it's kind of cool seeing people on Tara's house, just sitting there haunched over their laptop doing writing. Cause that's what I do. And I'm like, it's me. It's me. It's that me. Look at me. Exactly. It me. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I'm in somewhat of the same vein because I am also a writer by trade. We are, we are writers here, but I guess, uh, and this is going to sound like flattering too because I just said how much I love her but I kind of identify <laughs> with Kauri. Kauri a lot mm. because she does a lot of very artistic things I I do design and art etc um, and she also like not to this is a, me in no way complaining either but oftentimes in my friendships I'm often the listener I people are they tell me the things and I just kind of say you gotta do what's right and right now it's a lot of everyone feels like they can pour their heart out to Kauri right now Mm -hmm. so I identify you know sitting there and having someone tell me like I I'm thinking about this what should I what should I do Mm -hmm. and And then she'll just say you gotta do what's right (sighs) Hmm. You gotta do what's right. Like she, she definitely doesn't take like very hard stances, you know. Mm. And I identify that with what because I'm like I don't know your life entirely. Like you gotta just do what's do right. What's right. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So for me, I definitely find that the person I agree with the most in all of Terrace House is Yama. Like I feel like that's uh. an actual answer. <laughs> like I'm actually Yama. I at least that's what I think I am. What I hope. I am maybe, but do you, when it comes do you to when what? What do you do? hope to you be? Ain't no cherry China, boy. He's awesome. I, I mean, no he's cherry. married. He's married to you, Aoi. That's that's not a bad. Love, yeah, it's Yama a bad is gig. A, no, it's not at all. So I yeah, I, that's kind of my hope, my dream. But it, I think that if I was actually in Terrace House, I would go in there with the aspiration. When it comes to talking about actual time on the show and not the adjacent shit i would want to go in there with the aspiration of being perceived as another shion for his what Mm -hmm. he did and how he was on the show but i think what would actually happen is i'd probably end up more like kenny i could definitely see myself more like kenny we're similar in age uh similar in occupation i was a singer before as well too and i'm not very much someone that just throws it all out there like early on i think i would be kind of guarded on day one and maybe people would think that I'm closed off because of it, but I also would be more kind of like the guy that is just chilling in the cut, like very um, self-assured, high self-esteem. I don't need to prove anything to anybody. I'm just back here minding my own business. If you want to learn about me, you come to me and be quiet and, you know, and I'll let other people decide if I'm the manliest guy in the house or whatever, but that's that tends to be, you know, what he's doing now in Tokyo 2019, 2020 is kind of how I think I would actually be in Terrace House. Hmm. Interesting. You know, I, I didn't even think about the host, but I guess I make enough dirty jokes to probably be like a Tokui. 
Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah, he, he was like, I was thinking about what that joke he made where he's like, uh, where he said, uh, cucumber's fine, but when you say zucchini, you've gone too far. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that no king like, shaming. That sounds like something you would true. say, Robert, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I also don't like no king shaming. I'm a very strong uh, fan of that. I'm going to do uh, uh, one, ep- one week, every episode, I'm going to pick one kink to shame. Okay. I'll no. find one for next week, yeah. Oh, we'll do no do you have one for this week? Uh, I'll find one later. Okay. Very <laughs> uh, after we're done. All right. We're in the home for- stretch. Final question here. Last one from Pika Black. Pika Black. Blah. Uh, Blah. Blah. Uh, are there any life experiences you've had that could be classified as a, quote, terrace house incident? akin to the meat oh incident for example God. some drama that was seemingly very petty but still impacted you or your relationship with someone hmm. Hmm. uh I, Jack, I have a you small have no, i have a small one that really that is kind of okay. like Colin. in this in this pocket in this wheelhouse of like it doesn't really matter but it, it was kind of petty uh so i think it was like freshman year of my, my undergrad uh, the same year in which I've told the story about my roommate getting drunk and, and cutting his head open. Uh, if you guys remember mm-hmm. that story. Uh, so that same roommate. So we thought it was a good idea to walk into living together with the system of like, we'll trade off who gets to buy groceries. And so there was three of us. So it would be like, you know, every third week it, it was my turn. So on and so forth. And so. Okay. One roommate buys groceries for that week and he says he's going to make dinner one night and he was going to make like jambalaya or something like that. Um, so I was like, that's cool. And so it came up and it was like kind of the night to for him to cook. And it was getting to around like four or five o'clock. And I was just like, so, hey, like, are we going to do dinner? And he's like, oh, I'm not hungry. And I'm like, OK, so I guess mm. the rest of us just aren't going to eat. <laughs> like so the starvation right. incident, <laughs> the jump right incident. i guess so and i was just like uh okay so what like i don't know what we're gonna do so i just took it upon myself to like i'm just gonna i guess cook the meal that you said you were gonna cook and his ingredients oh. that he had gotten for the jambalaya was like how the fuck do you make jambalaya out of this? I don't exactly remember what it was. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure this isn't all you need for jambalaya. I'm pretty sure you need like way more ingredients. I think it was just like rice and then like sausage and then some sort of tomato sauce. Yeah, this is, I, this is, I think there's a little bit more. I, I, yeah. I, it's cheap jambalaya. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm pretty sure there's way more involved in this, but I can't remember. I think I just threw it all together and it ended up being pretty bland. And I, and I don't know. He was just like visually upset because I, I was like, hey, man, like you're going to cook. He's like, dude, I'm not fucking hungry. Like, I don't know. what you, I'm like, OK, like, I guess the rest of us are just going to starve. <laughs> yeah, there was a there was a lot of bad dietary choices made my freshman year of college. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Join the yeah. club. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, uh, anyone else have a story? OK, so. There has only been one time in my life where I actually had a shared living experience. I was in a very terrible metal band in the early aughts. Okay, so 2002, 2003, 2004-ish time frame. And I'm not going to say the name of the band because they were terrible. And I don't think we even have anything online. So, (laughs) But anyways, um, at that time we were – it was like college. Like we were drinking – like every weekend we got trashed. I mean like – $200 $200 worth of liquor was consumed between four guys. It was stupid. It was just a party house. We owned a house too, like in a residential suburb too. Oh my God. So it was oh, crazy. I'm sure the neighbors loved you. Crazy times. We had fights with neighbors. Like we would have shouting matches in the front yard with the next door neighbors about parking spots and shit. And oh, no. the neighbor lady had her cousins come in and break into our cars to steal shit one night to get revenge. Oh, holy so Jesus. So that's not even the incident, by the way. <laughs> Okay, so, but one incident is called the Splash Incident, okay? And so, the reason being is because we went up and played a Battle of the Bands in Cleveland. Peabody's, I want to oh, say, shit. is the name of the bar. I can't <laughs> remember. It's not even there anymore. Peabody's? <laughs> no, it's old, dude. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. I actually forgot the name until just now. Just Peabody's. I saw a few shows there. We're playing a... We're playing Battle of Bands, and um, there's a eclectic group of bands there. They're not all metal. They're just all kinds of different things. There's one kind of hip-hop outfit where this white guy, I remember he looked like kind of Shifty Shellshock 
from uh, from H Town. Be my lady, come come my lady, you're my butterfly. Uh, hey, okay, look Crazy like town. look like that guy, but he had a giant black afro, like fake afro on. It was a wig. Mm. Okay, and one of our friends didn't even like our band, like because we were too heavy for him. But he liked like classic rock. Right, like classic 60s, 70s, 80s rock. But he was our good friend. He was our roommate. And so he came to support us. He could stand our music because at least it was guitar and drums. He hated anything hip hop related. Okay, like hated it. And so these guys are hip hop inspired. And he was forced to sit through the show because he's there supporting us. And he was drunk for sure. So alcohol became an issue. Oh, so no. this is on stage in front of a giant crowd. He grabs his drink of water. And the guy that looks like Shifty Shelf is acting all dumb. Like, I do not condone this whatsoever. This is a no, 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 no in any circumstance. In the middle of their song, he screams in that guy's face like he's like right by the stage. He goes, you fucking suck and throws the water on the dude and i was like oh, no. Bro, in the middle of their song like dude we are not from this area like this is like you're affiliated with us this makes our band look terrible they could kick us out right now like dude this is shitty and it ended up being like a mini brawl kind of thing thank god like security was able to break break it up and like <sighs> it was oh, a bad scene god. but but yeah, but and th that's where the first time in my life I ever heard someone say, "We finna see, we finna see." Oh my god! <laughs> now people people still say that, and but that's the very first time I ever heard that phrase because his girlfriend, I remember yeah. she's kind of like this um bigger redhead girl, and she was just like trying to fight the dude that threw water on her mans right so so the dude was actually holding her back the dude that was all wet was like, "No, no, no, don't do anything," and she said, "Oh, we finna see, we finna see." And so that's the splash. That's hilarious scene. because the first time I ever went to Peabody's, there was a fight. Three fights, actually. Dude, it sounds, sounds like a Peabody. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like, wow. So Rip anyways, peace. that was the story there. Um, Man, that, this yeah, sounds I, way more hardcore than any Terrace House incident. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit different. A little bit. Well, just a little yeah. bit. So second incident, same group of friends, same house. We live there together. It's called the broom incident. This is just one of those Friday or Saturday nights where we were drunk doing stupid shit. And one of my friends, this is a short story. He took the empty case of beer, like the, the cardboard and wore it as a hat. classic. Right. And yeah. And so is it? I don't know. And so it's like a lot of empty space. There's like a chef hat, right? Like there's a lot of mm. air up there when he puts his head on it. I'm dumb. I'm drunk. Full disclosure. This is an idiot mistake on my part. I took a broom and he was sitting on our couch and I was like, I'll bet I can smack the shit out of that, <laughs> the top empty part of that hat and knock it off his head. <laughs> <laughs> And trust me, like, there's no logical explanation for this. There's alcohol is involved. That's why it's a bad thing to do, kids. Don't drink and swing. Brooms. Jack made a decision and he ended well. up assaulting someone. This poor life. <laughs> so I fucking, I fucking go into it, man. Like, like, like Hikaru uh, on the driving range, right? Like, I'm like, whoop, Pam. Sure as shit, I hit the fucking sausage links on the back of his neck, like the wrinkly part of his <laughs> neck. I'm like, oh! links. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a pack of a frozen bag of hot dogs, and I smack him right there on like the base of his spine with a broom. Did you paralyze handle. that? Did you murder someone? No, <laughs> it sounds like it. But <laughs> as soon as we heard that crack, everyone in the room started cracking up. He fell over. Oh my god! Because we're all smashed, man. He falls over. Um, then I, I'm scared to death because he's not a small man. Okay, like he, if he wanted to, he could definitely like punch me and give me a black eye or something like that so i am like so sorry but so scared at the same time because he turns bright red like hulk rage he's got oh, smacked no. in the head with a fucking broomstick and so i run to the front door and he corners me and i'm like oh no please don't and then i was able to plead my way out of getting pummeled but i certainly probably deserved it <laughs> and then uh we made peace later that night but that was an incident you know, you get Hikaru and Haruka mixed up. Because did you mean Haruka earlier? Yeah, you said I driving did. Sorry. Range? There, I do now. It's it's, it's in my I need to. I'll get but, there. Yeah, your but incidents you know are a lot more hardcore. Like, look, <laughs> the meat incident happened, but it's not like Uchi took a broom and was like, I'm going to murder all of you now. <laughs> I'm going to sweep away no, your blood no. for my Guys, meat. All I can say is I've lived some life. I've got some crazy <laughs> stories. A lot of stories I can't even tell like on the show. Maybe I'll save it for a, a Discord chat or something. I had we'll a, I had a roommate I that ask. left and decided to steal pots and pans and silverware thinking it was his. Oh, my quote unquote. God. Nice. 
Uh, I don't know. I've, I've got a very Terrace House incident. It's very petty that I love. Um, so I was a freshman in college and, you know, in, in dorm life, you kind of latch on to the first friends you can make because, I mean, for me especially, I moved from across the world, didn't really know anyone in Ohio, unfortunately, because it's Ohio, right? Um, so yeah. I latch on to the hmm. first group of friends. There were maybe like six or seven of us and we'd hang out a lot. And we ended up being like the people in the dorm everyone hated because this dorm was very artsy fartsy. And we were very like, it's art is cool but also money these were the kind of people who didn't want to talk about money because they were like but passion my singing will get me anywhere with that exactly i'm already annoyed at this story yes i think i've heard this one and but here's the thing our group fractured a bit because there were two people let's call them mike and mitch Mm. who uh were very they were very aggressive in terms of like they wouldn't punch a man out but they would argue them argue with them and argue in circles with them because they love to think that they are good debaters and they were classic like libertarians so like they'd love to bring up politics whenever oh, they can love to bring up religion it, it got really messy all the time and the rest of us were kind of getting sick of them so while we were all still friends we would occasionally not go to the lobby of the dorm and just hang out in like one of the study rooms like that are up in the dorms right okay. and that's just where we'd chill and it was just like a nice quiet environment we'd do our work there we'd hang out there we'd watch movies there all that kind of stuff and then when we decided when the other five of us decided we don't want to hang out with them anymore we would go to di- different study rooms like in the dorm mm. because we knew like that one was like our hangout spots so we're just going to go to like other places and Whenever we got texts from Mike and Mitch, like, hey, where are you guys at? We're like, oh, you, you know, we're just, uh, no, oh we're not together. God. We're just, uh, we're, we're in our own rooms or we're off doing other shit. We're in class. You're so we, the plastics we, of nerd, artsy nerds? <laughs> well, these kids weren't artsy nerds. They were like us where they didn't much like the, art, the artsy fartsy people. Ah, uh, got it, got it. But because they were so argumentative, we just wanted to avoid them. And we avoided them just by going to other, like, literally, it was just a matter of, like, we were in a room above the one we'd usually go to that kind of thing we would like run around and explore the dorm and other dorms we are hidden just to find new rooms that they won't find us in this is petty this is more like terrace house extremely petty oh yeah petty so what's the name what's the name of your incident the study room incident okay that i mean that's pretty good yeah i mean i i definitely had a this is a really short one but I, i had like a roommate that would like if you didn't just cut off the conversation at some point, it would just never end. You know what I'm mm. saying? So it was one of those things where I had to like shut the doors like, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep. And shut uh-huh, the door so I uh-huh. could actually do get stuff done or play games or whatever. Otherwise he would just sit there and, and jabber, jabber, jabber. I'm like, dude, I've been sitting here pausing with my game for like 30 minutes now. I'd like to keep playing, please. Thanks. <laughs> The Jabber incident. Jabber. Although that that's a Java thing, is or an Oracle thing. Jabber. Yeah. Jabber. It's Jabber. A software. It's a software. Yeah. Yeah. Jabber walkie. I think we covered a lot go. today, guys. We did. Uh, wow, you guys wanted shit. more. You got more. It's our longest episode probably ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have oh God, I have like almost two hours of audio to to hey. deal with. Yeah. This will be fun. Thank to edit. you guys. Thank you for all your questions. Yeah. We love you. We hope this was interesting for you. And uh, maybe when we get to the next milestone, we'll do another one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions you want to ask us, you know, hey, join the Discord chat. We're, we're all there. Um, we use Discord, obviously, to record the show itself. So, like, we're, we're pretty connected to it. And if you want to join the links down below, it's where we fielded most of our questions today. So if you want to be a part of that, that kind of, you know, interconnectedness feel free to check us out down there yeah personally Um, also everyone that um there's a lot of response we had to the instagram post too so thank you for everyone that found us on instagram as well awesome shit hell yeah um i don't know i I guess this brings us to a wrap here this is a bit of a different episode for sure but you know we'll be back again next tuesday you know we're doing our our typical shtick we're gonna cover episode seven i'm excited Back on our bullshit yeah you know, and, and honestly, we've mapped it out. If we keep going, we're going to finish right before American Thanksgiving, which feels very karmically nice. And I'm excited we, for that. We, we give thanks for Terrace House. Mm-hmm. And thanks to our fans, because this entire episode has been driven by you guys. So thank you so much for all of that. This has been 
Taraiman. Thanks for listening. Itekimasu. If you enjoy our show, please like, comment, and subscribe, and ding the bell to receive notifications when we publish new content. Follow us on social media and check out our brand new Discord server linked in the description below.